Hey everyone, welcome back to my uh, home studio. My name is Sean Carlson. I am a freelance artist based here in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I hope this video finds you well. I myself am in a very good mood because I just finished a brand new painting. That's right, uh, the notorious Conor McGregor. That's right, the uh, notorious Conor McGregor, Mystic Mac, the Fighting Irish. Uh, I've been a fan of both his and the UFC for a long time now, and uh, he's got a big fight coming up this weekend, so I figured now's the perfect time to get down this painting idea I've had in my head for a while. Uh, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button, keeps you up to date on all future art and videos. And uh, I got a time lapse coming up that takes you through the entire painting process. So with uh, all that being said, let's get started. Okay, so uh, the first strokes that you see here are uh, what we call an underpainting, which does a few things. Uh, on a basic level, because paint is somewhat transparent, this is done to simply cover up the background color of the canvas or whatever it is that is supposed to sit behind the thing that you're painting. Uh, but I'm also using this stage to plan out my lights and darks. Uh, as you can see with, you know, a very simple light tone, mid tone, and dark tone, only three colors, you can see the plan of where the general shading will go once the final layer of paint and detail will be put on top of this. Uh, you can also see in a sort of very rudimentary way, I'm, as I'm going along, I'm keeping in the back of my mind where I plan on fading out into the splatter effect, as I call it, for, uh, for the figure. So starting from left, I'm working my way across the canvas and sort of feathering off my brush strokes as I work my way over to the right. Okay, so with these next colors coming up, uh, though it might look weird at first, uh, these colors are what I like to use to inform and influence the flesh tones that will sit on top of them. Uh, the way I approach painting flesh is I try to think of it in the way of how flesh actually works. Uh, it's not, you know, one sort of general peach tone of skin that's wrapped around the human form. It's a multitude of many different transparent layers of skin, all with different colors and different things going on that layer on top of one another and inform what the flesh looks like from the outside. Uh, so to that end, you can see me working in the yellows in the highlights where the skin is closest to the light source, the top of his shoulder, bridge of his nose, forehead, the very top of his thigh on the bottom there, you can see the pinks in the mid-tones where, uh, you know, the flesh and blood all sort of, all sort of sit, and uh, blue in the shadows to give it some depth and also show the sort of blue veins that sh sit in the shadows. Uh, just underneath our skin. And so lastly, I'm also going in and underpainting the tattoos, which uh, took a whole lot of work and time and effort, uh, something I'll be going into a little bit more in the next segment. But uh, in principle, this is the same thing, same idea, putting the right colors in the right spots to build up opacity and set the stage for the truer or more accurate colors that will eventually sit on top of them. Alright, the tattoos. Uh, as you can probably tell from the tone of my voice, uh, the tattoos were a lot of work to pull off. They're detailed, intricate, and very big, but uh, you know, they're a part of his iconic look, so we gotta render them accurately. Uh, for those wondering exactly how accurately, you can go ahead and count those feathered sort of lines coming out of the tattoo onto his uh, shoulder and his outer chest, and they're the exact same number as his actual tattoo, and that level of detail is the same throughout the rest of the piece. Uh, throughout my career, I've done a good amount of tattoo and art conventions and made a, a good amount of friends in the tattoo world, and when talking to them, they all, all often sort of gripe about the same thing when seeing tattoos recreated in art or on film, TVs, and movies, which uh, gave me a good roadmap of things to avoid. 
uh, chief among them is you got to make sure the blacks are not actually black when you paint them and also none of the colors are super saturated or the tattoo looks too fresh uh, once the tattoo heals you got to remember it sits under a good couple layers of skin and should therefore look as such meaning sitting under the skin in the actual painting and so here we get to one of the uh, one of the only breaks that I got in the painting, which is the gloves. Uh, as any artist will tell you, painting hands or drawing hands is one of the hardest things to render accurately on the human figure. But luckily, because he's a UFC fighter, all I gotta do is you know big poofy black gloves, throw a UFC logo on top of them, and then little finger nubs, and we're done. All right, and here we have the meat of the painting, where I spend most of my time. Uh, I always go for the portrait first, being that it's most often the hardest part, and also the first thing you look at when seeing the painting. I kind of want to use most of my time and creative energy on that first. Then the rest of the painting, I know I can kind of relax a little bit, knowing that the heavy lifting is done. Uh, for those wondering about the reference for this, uh, this was taken from a photo of Connor at the Jose Aldo fight where he uh, famously knocked him out in one punch, the first punch he threw. Uh, the reference photo that I found was almost perfect. Uh, I had him in just the right pose that I had originally sketched and uh, with only a few tweaks to his arm positions. Uh, I did, however, flip the image horizontally because I like the sort of direction and flow of the splatter going left to right a little bit more. Uh, but that meant, therefore, getting uh, different references for his tattoos which were also flipped horizontally and then mapping them onto this pose and this lighting. Uh, what you can see me doing here is a very light wash of skin tone over his tattoos, which uh, goes to the same idea that I mentioned before. That being that the tattoos have to look like they are sitting under the skin. Also keeping in mind that the black of his tattoos has to be much lighter in tone than the true black of the gloves that are right next to it. In this style, even though I always end up erasing it in the end, which you just saw me do, uh, I always draw out the full figure. Uh, this gives me a better idea of how much of the figure I need to include, and therefore how much I can then disintegrate away. Uh, you'll see me doing that throughout this entire section. It's sort of the push and pull that goes on where I'm constantly trying to find that line of where the realistic rendering of the figure ends and therefore where the splatter effect can start. Now, obviously what you're seeing here is sped up, uh, but in real time, this piece was about, uh, about 10 days to two weeks to complete. Uh, it's always hard to give a more accurate timetable on how long it takes because as a freelance artist, you're always kind of juggling a million things at once in and around the current painting you're working on. I'm talking to various clients about commissions, uh, sketching future paintings, doing social media promotions, and also the, you know, just mundane bookkeeping and administrative tasks that it takes to keep a business up and running. But when I need to keep my workflow in line, I always turn to Monday Duck. <laughs> just, just kidding. They, they don't sponsor me. This isn't a commercial. All right, so approaching the end here, what you see me doing is sort of a uh, spot checking or skipping around and refining various aspects of the piece that I can improve on and also pushing the lights and darks out a little further. Uh, one of the rules of art is that your darkest darks and lightest lights should go on last because those are the finish finishing touches and the most bold and eye-catching areas. Uh, I add in here the brightest highlights to the top of his shoulder the bridge of his nose and the tops of his brow and forehead, which also helps to bring your eyes to those areas. I also add in here the very last of the uh, tattoo work, I'm happy to say, the McGregor across his stomach. 
the painting in of his hair and beard here, which uh, after showing it to some friends to critique, I actually ended up giving his mustache a good trim because as they rightly pointed out, it was quite a bit too long. And lastly, the final splatter. Uh, as you can see here, all it is is a matter of masking off the main body of the figure, scooping up a bunch of paint on the brush and throwing it. So there we have it. Uh, peek behind the curtain as to how I make one of these things. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and my heavy Long Island accent wasn't too much for you in the uh, narration. Coffee. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like and make sure to share with your friends. I'll see you all in the next one.